Sonic it does have is very decent integration uh, of U uh, of, uh, Amiga emulation into its desktop. So I believe it's using a UAE and a common by sound or is something in big ubiquitous Amiga emulator, I believe. But it integrates it very well into the desktop, um, which makes almost makes uh, an ADF file, which is a basically the Amiga floppy disk put into a single file and um, look like it's a native application on, on your desktop and it's it, it's a really nice project I'm still looking, in the process of looking at that at the moment but very impressed it's come on leaps and bounds since I last looked at it and the web browser is fully functional um, it has a, a plethora of different utilities now including some quite fancy little uh, demos as well showing its um, its capabilities and it also comes bundled with Quake and Doom so it's got something there to keep me entertained as well so in the common words I'll be uh, speaking more on that as I, as I discover the new, uh, the new features of this and uh, yes a very exciting project. Um, right, I right. think we'll, we'll go into a song where we try to get the audio improved somewhat because uh, you're it, it's not as though you're getting cut off I, well, you probably will hear it later but uh, anyway the next song is going to be Luxury and it's by somebody called uh, uh, Tiger Safety.
thanks for staying with us. Uh, this was a track that we basically threw in just to try and test the sound for a bit. Um, we were trying to figure out the issues with sound. We never had a uh, uh, sound complication of these sorts before, so hopefully, hopefully it won't recur later. Uh, one thing I was going to mention, though, uh, since uh, Tim basically wrote, he mentioned that he also wrote about the uh, the fact that the his uh, distro was coming with some sound on it. I believe it's uh, Sabion mm -hmm. did that. Uh, I just found out I, I bought two um, two music players yesterday, and they actually come preloaded with some tracks on them. I don't really know the license, but it's just a bit awkward because in, in the past when I bought music players, portable music players, they usually come empty, so I wonder if that's a usual thing. And I actually actually have a bit of a story about that, because I went and bought this in Argos, and I'm trying to support companies that are supportive of Linux, and uh, I got my players that are made by uh, by Arcos, a French company, although they make the uh, they make the actual players in, in China, uh, like most things. but. Uh, the thing that I found in Argos, when I approached one of the terminals there to pick up the, th the stuff, it's, uh, it had a, uh, a uh, bit of a window giving an alert from a browser that's called Opera, you probably know that, uh, and the window decorators were something that resembled the Fedora defaults, and, uh, and later after some discussion it turned out it might be CentOS, uh, and it's going to be interesting because Argos is a very major chain here, so if this is true, that they use uh, a version of Linux with Opera on all the machines that run the terminals, uh, that's going to be like ten, perhaps tens of thousands of those all around the place. And this is an this is an example of basically Linux running very secretly underneath things. And unless something goes wrong, you never actually see that it's there. But you know, companies mm -hmm. do use that. So that that was an interesting experience. And I I think uh, yeah, I'll pass it over to you if you if you have the uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I can't. Uh, I can't add anything. I think there are a lot of companies like Argos. I wasn't aware of Argos uh, until I, I believe I read it was either your article or one I read in that was posted into uh, Cola uh, Compost Linux Advocacy. But yeah, I did, I did see that recently. But I mean, certainly Argos won't be alone. I think it's safe to say there'll be many companies, and maybe we should be looking at who's keeping a lid on this type of information because it would, certainly would be a, in the public interest to know how many machines aren't running uh, a traditional. Uh, operating system, uh, for want of a better word, in in the mainstream users' minds. So, uh, no, it's very interesting. I'm sure uh, with a bit of digging, we can find uh, a few other companies. Uh, I heard Tesco is doing the same. I was told by a person in uh, in the Compass uh, news group, the one you just mentioned. Uh, he said Tesco is using it as well. I know they use in some places they use Windows, and they occasionally have some issues uh, trying to access the network. And then the tools basically don't work, and people can't buy anything. So it's it's an interesting you know it it is a classification to be made uh, and and you do need to try and pay attention to what's running what and basically what the you know what the reliability levels are and I suppose it's pretty decent for for the purpose of basically uh, presenting an interface to users without things like porn pop-ups coming up like you might expect from an infected Windows machine that's connected to with a with an actual IP address. I think that's a valid point. I think everybody, and I believe in society, used to get collect photographs of this, but I believe everybody's seen a blue screen of death on some public billboard or um, some sort of service in, in a shop, maybe. But maybe the reason why Linux was never advertised as being used in any of these shops is because it wouldn't have a fault and nobody would know. Um, like I said, there was a site dedicated to the blue screen of death where it's found in public places. I think I saw it on a, on a couple of cash points, and um, this was on this site. I wish I could name the site because it was quite good. But uh, on cash points and on big advertising boards. And so maybe the fact that it is stable and hasn't crashed is the fact that uh, people don't.